What's up boys, Callsign Grammy here. Welcome back to another DCS AH64D Apache fast and easy tutorial video in the CPG seat. Now, this will probably be broken up into two, maybe three total videos covering the CPG role and the seat and, and all the weapon systems and all that stuff. For this video, we're gonna cover kind of like your initial setup, kind of getting acclimated in the CPG seat so that you have a baseline understanding of what you should be doing. There's nothing worse, and I can tell you this from my own experience as well as other uh, uh, folks that I fly with and I know that uh, fly the Apache and they're piloting the Apache and when they go to have a CPG with them it's nothing worse than you know flying getting on station and whoever is in the CPG seat is kind of lost in the sauce fumbling around taking way too long to get on targets and uh, uh, you know deploy weapon systems and all that stuff you don't want to be that guy because I promise you people will, will not want to fly with you. Okay. So hopefully this video will get you set up as fast and easy as possible. And with that being said, a quick reminder that the entire goal for my fast and easy series of tutorial videos is to give you a very baseline, just a core foundational level understanding of how to work the aircraft weapon systems uh, in the modules themselves. All right. If you want to get way more in depth, if you want to do really simulated one for one experiences and that level of knowledge, definitely this is not the video for you. Okay. So go check out some other uh, DCS content creators that have more in depth, uh, longer form uh, tutorial videos. Go read the Chuck's guides, the manuals to go all the way in. Uh, but if you're like me and you just want to get in there, have some fun and be proficient enough to uh, you know, efficiently and properly work the aircraft, then what I'm going to share with you in these series of videos will get you up and running uh, as fast as possible. With that being said, let's dive into the CPG seat. I'm flying solo, so George flew me over on station, right on Nevada map. This is actually a training mission I created for myself that has various locations to do various things, so that helps with making these tutorial videos. Um, what we're going to do here is once we're in the CPG seat, let's go ahead and get ourselves kind of just set up and kind of walk through the process. One of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the eye hands real quick and I'm going to just focus on getting my uh, displays all set up here. Um, I like to have the weapon systems on the left side and I'll keep the TSD over on the right. I'll also take this time to flip it into attack mode. So as I deploy weapons or if I line up on targets, I can go ahead and mark them and they'll pop up here. So they'll be stored into the system and it makes it easier to kind of just have that all together. Um, and so I'll keep that on the right side. One other thing I make sure to do is I'll go to show, we'll, uh, box show, and then we'll have some more options over here. Uh, I always like to make sure I have all of these pretty much checked on. So pilot cursor is on, cursor info, I like to have that information on there. Uh, current route is on, and then we'll also turn it over to nav phase, and I'll make sure I have all of these boxed up just so that I have all that information um, I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with having all that information on the screen. This can be a preference thing, but I like having all that information on there so I can see what's going on at all times. Um, once that is set up, we're, we're good to go. Um, next thing we're going to do, of course, you're going to make sure, and you should do this as you're taking off, but make sure you're in alignment here with your iHeads and uh, Boresight that. That should be pretty obvious. Now, the next thing we're going to do here is turn on our iHeads back on. We're going to use the I button to turn it on and off. You can keep buying that if you like. Um, and now what we're gonna do here to take control of the T deck right here, because right now we can't move it around. You see the, the knob moving here, but it's not uh, it's not doing anything. You're gonna need to go make sure that you flick over here where it says FCR link HMD and TADS. You're gonna go right to the TADS. Now you notice that we have control. If we move our thumbstick around, we have control of the T deck. Um, however, many of you will notice that you get the FLIR screen on your display and it makes it very annoying. And for a long time, what I did and many folks would do was just hit the I button to then get rid of your iHeads and then you would just work from the screen like this. However, you don't need to do that. Uh, this is a common question, how to get rid of that while still keeping your iHeads on. Let me show you how you do it. You're going to go ahead and come over to NVS mode. You're gonna turn it on to norm. Then you'll come back to your TDAC and on the right side you have BRT. That's not for brat, that's for brightness, okay? You're gonna click that all the way down. And just like that, you have now gotten rid of that FLIR display on your iHeads. Come back down to NVS mode and turn that off. Once we've turned that off, flick over to TADS again. And now you see we have full control of our uh, TDAC with our iHeads on. Now, if at this point you want to turn your iHeads off, 
because you just don't want it on you can do that but you don't have to you can leave it on here and as you're working your tdx system here you could glance up and you'll have an important i heads uh, information displayed on uh on it so as you're looking up over you know the horizon or whatever you're looking at here um so that is kind of important there i wanted to share that with you i'm just i heads off real quick let's continue on here um super important here that you need to make sure next that you go to utility and we need to turn on our laser system make sure our laser is on um here you can see, you, are, you can already see that it's boxed um if it is not you'll just see it with unbox with a donut next to the laser um, once you hit the box it'll be fully uh a full dot there and you know that that is now activated so your laser system is on next let's go to code you need to make sure that you are on the right code here if you are working with other apaches in the area or uh you know you've got reapers you have other uh aircraft that are lazing on the ground you just want to make sure that you have your own laser code and everything is set up so let's walk through how to set up your uh laser codes here it's very simple and also very important to do so we're going to hit the box for code and we're going to see all of the different options here uh, a through l or uh yeah a through l here to uh select our laser code ranges and so on and so forth here um, once we box that, you're going to see here set says LRFD. So what this means is that whatever button that we picked is going to be the laser code for our laser uh, range finder aboard the aircraft, right? It's going to be our own laser code for our uh, weapon systems. So in this case, you can leave it at A for 1688. That works. However, if you wanted to change it to something else, because there might be other aircraft on that freak, uh, a code rather uh, operating in the area that you're in you can come over the freak box that come on over to whatever letter it is you want to assign it to let's say alpha for now we'll click alpha you see that 1688 is boxed we'll look here at the number pad and we're going to input something different so we'll just say let's go one five eight six which is an acceptable acceptable code enter we have now changed alpha to 1586 so that we are off of the main code that other aircraft are on for our weapon systems, for anything that we are going to fire from our aircraft. So we'll unbox that. We're gonna make sure that set shows LRFD on the alpha, we're good to go. Now, if you wanted to do buddy lasing and you wanted to work with some of those other aircraft because their laser systems, you know, let's say there's an F-18 above, high up there, lasing some targets on the ground for you or Harrier, whoever, whatever aircraft is up in the air, uh, could be another Apache, you know, over the horizon or on, on top of a mountain that's lasing down for you. If you want to get on their laser code, you need to make sure you hit set to flick over to LST, laser spot track. Now with this one, we need we need to pick a different uh, uh, code and the code that they are on so that our systems is tracking their laser. So for this, you can see here, it defaulted to Alpha 1586. We don't want that because that is the code that we have designated for our aircraft when we fire our, our uh, Hellfires. So we're going to just pick Bravo here. And again, you can pick any one of these. Any, any one of these you can change, all right? But we'll go to Bravo. You'll see that it's 2111. Uh, uh, let's just say that the other aircraft are on 1688, which is a very popular number that most of these servers use. So we're going to box 2111. We'll come to frequency and we'll box it again there technically you just box it right here uh, once it's boxed you'll see that uh the b freak is popped up here on the input so we're going to go 1688 we'll enter that and you'll see now that it has changed the code on bravo um you'll see here that it is boxed because we boxed it earlier so now the laser spot tracker is uh, is on bravo channel for 1688 so now when we come back out to our main weapons menu here, you'll see that LST is on Bravo channel, which is on 1688, and the uh, laser, laser range finder uh, aboard our aircraft uh, is on Alpha channel, which is on 1586. So now you are fully set up, ready to go to fire your own Hellfires or get on the laser code of another gunship or uh, aircraft you know, overhead to or the Reaper if you're if you're in a multiplayer server to get on their code to search for the target lock it send it over and, and let their uh laser guide your uh missile in rather excuse me if i said rocket i meant missile 
Um, so that is how you set up those guys. Super important. Make sure you do that properly, okay? Now, the weapons on board for this demonstration video, I have both versions of the Hellfires, the Limos and the Kilos. And if you want to switch between the two, let's say you decided that, hey, I want to go with the radar version over the lasers to start. The way to change them, very easy over here where it says type. You're going to go ahead and push push button uh, right one. And it's going to go from Sal to RF, which is the radar. And when you flick it back, Sal, which is the laser systems, it's going to go back. And you'll see that the changes from left to right are for the radar, else for the lasers. And that is how you switch between the two weapon systems uh, or, or versions of the Hellfires there, depending on what you want to do. And that's how you do that. Next, let's talk about turning on your radar systems here so that you can get those notifications and those callouts from the radar system. If we look over here on the map, you can see there's a little, I can't zoom in anymore, but there's a icon right over here that is uh, designating a enemy force that's on a radar. I think it was an SA-3 might be over there or something like that. Um, if you want to turn that on so you have more situational awareness, you're going to go to utility. Then we're in a box ASC. Once we see this here, you can see it gives you our radar system. We're in the center. You see there at about our three o'clock or so, there's that uh, enemy, whatever that is over there. I don't remember quite what it is. Um, and then you can see here we have different options for our shaft. It's on safe. We could turn that to arm. We could put it back to safe. Shaft mode, we can leave it on manual, which is what I prefer because if you put it in program mode, uh, it kind of just spouts off way too many shaft and flares and all that stuff. So I'd rather do it manually. It's a preference thing. You see how many shaft you have on board. 30. Um, auto page search. You can set this off to a couple different things to track. Uh, I think normally it defaults to search. And then from here, we're going to hit utility again to take us to a secondary page on inside of the ASC. And then here on the right side is very important. This RLWR is what you need to activate to turn on the system here. You can see just like the uh, laser, uh, when you need to turn that on, when you come in here, it's going to be like a donut next to the RLWR. Hit the push button next to it. You'll see now it is, is a, there it is. We're being searched. Okay. Um, once you fully box it is when you're going to get those callouts. So do not forget to come back here and turn on or box or fully push the circle in there or whatever. Uh, on the RLWR, once you do that, you come back out, come back out of ASC, come back out of utility, and then you're right back here, um, ready to go on your weapon systems. Next, let's go ahead and talk about some of the important key binds that you need to have for the CPGC. All right, first things first, in order to uh, zoom in and out for your TDAC here, you're gonna need to bind some important buttons. You can see here on the left side of the TDAC grip, you've got TADS, zoom, medium, wide, narrow those are your four fields of zoom for the system here and we're going to need to bind those so let's take a look and those controls are going to be L left hand grip tads fov switch z for zoom medium narrow wide it's four buttons right there next what we need to set up is the polarity here between flare tv and between white hot and black hot so you, as you can see here we are in white hot press the button again we'll go into black hot and then with we'll another one and we'll take us into tv mode so let's take a look at those buttons for that and that is going to be uh LH lhg ted sensor select switch FLIR. we're going to have a lhg ted sensor select switch tv and then we need to have the boresight polarity switch plrt and that's what's going to allow you to switch between white hot and black hot while you are in FLIR mode Okay, so we'll go back to flare mode. You can see I press the button and it flips between uh, white hot and black hot. One thing I do want to suggest here is going into the axis commands and creating a zoom view button for yourself so that you can zoom in and out. I find it very useful for when you are uh, trying to look for targets here. Um, it helps me to like not have to lean my head into the monitor and I can zoom in and it just makes my searching around a little bit easier and uh, less of a strain in the eye. So it definitely helps, I suggest, to bind something. I have a button here on my throttle that's like a slider. And so I just put on a slider, back and forth, whatever I want. Super useful when you want to zoom in and really look for something in there without straining your eyeballs or again, putting your face into the monitor. All right, moving along, let's take a look at our display here. Another thing I find very useful to have bound is going to be the cursor display here. Uh, so that you can manipulate stuff on the displays a lot more quickly than you can pressing a bunch of different buttons, I find. It's useful. So let's take a look at what you need to have bound here. 
First, you're going to need to go to Axis Commands, and you're going you're going to want to bind the Holcast Cursor Control X and Y axes. Also, you're going to want to have bound the Cursor Display Select button Depress. Um, and when you press this, this is this is what's going to allow you to jump back and forth between each of your displays, left and right, left and right, so you can control different things here. Go back to the other side. All right. And the final thing you're you're going to need to have bound is going to be the cursor enter depress so the difference between these two buttons as i explained earlier um the first one is going to jump back and forth between the two displays so you can control left or the right one so now let's say that i want to get a direct on uh one of these target points and for example here we'll just pretend that zero one is actually a target i can hit route direct we're going to hover over it once you hover over any one of these target points, waypoints that are on your uh, map, that X will open up to a black circle, and then you're gonna hit the enter button, and we'll remove the route, and now you see that we have a direct to that target. So it just helps with your situational awareness, getting a line on the target, uh, you know, let's say the pilot or yourself marks some stuff, you're scouting around, you mark some stuff, uh, let's say you, you, you bend back out to get a better angle to fire on and, and in that turn you kind of lose yourself you can quickly orientate yourself this way by doing that and by using the uh joystick if you have one to do this it makes it really quick and easy to kind of do that just a little thing you can or can or not use it depends on what you want to do hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to like subscribe and check out the rest of the videos in the tutorial series for the apache and look forward to seeing you guys in the next video call sign crime me out